All right, well, welcome to Hold the Line Podcast. Uh, we are sitting inside of Camp Ila, on the hill, Washington, D.C. This is Brandon and Christina Harder, and so pumped that you guys are joining me today. Or I'm joining you, rather. I love it. We're pumped to, we're pumped <laughs> to have this conversation today. Yes. yes, I'm excited. And um, let's just, first of all, let's just talk about how epic last night Incredible. was. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Amazing. I mean, tell everybody what happened. Uh, worship echoed through the halls of the rotunda, through the yeah. halls of Congress. Yeah. It was loud. It was amazing. The Holy Spirit came. It was an incredible night. Incredible night. Atmosphere yeah. shifting. Ab- sure. Totally atmosphere shifted. I mean, it was like... For me, it was like a bucket list. Like, Mm. to be able to go into the U.S. Capitol Rotunda, which you got to explain for a second why this is so significant. This is the center of the city of D.C., but it's the ceremonial heart of the country. It's the ceremonial heart of the democratic experiment, right? Yeah. It's the most powerful building that represents the most powerful government that the world has ever seen. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. and we stood in the middle yeah. of the building last night and raised our arms yeah. and had worship. It was incredible. That's so epic. That's so cool. And and I that's one of the, my favorite things I love is you know when we talk about day night night and day incense arise. We talk about worship filling yes. the earth. We literally like it's 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 happening everywhere and mm. every corner of the earth, but every square inch of the most powerful buildings. On the yes. planet, which is right. what we were in last night. Right. Yes. So, wow. Right. And and I I want to I want to backtrack a little bit because there there's so many prayers and so many people and mm. so much of a God story intertwined that creates moments like we experienced last night. Yes. But I want to start with you guys. A little bit of your story, your background. How did you end up in D.C.? Yeah. You've been here for a while. Yeah. yeah. You go first. Well, for me, I um, have always loved politics. Have always been interested, but really felt like God was calling me more to. The mission field internationally, Um, and after grad school was out in the mission field, went to Tanzania, lived there for a while, worked with kind of some organizations that were faith-based with sex trafficking, and really felt like the Lord wanted me to come back to the United States. Um, Literally landed the day before the 2016 election, um, and just felt such a shifting, and I felt like the Lord just put politics on the front burner, um, international, not that it was any less important, but kind of on the on the back burner. And I just said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Um, and so I booked a, a, I interned in DC before, but booked a one way ticket January of 2017, um, out to DC and just said, okay, Lord, what do you, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to be? Um, and he opened a couple doors first onto the Hill and, um, got involved with a couple prayer walks where I met Brandon and, um, and then into ever. definitely, yes, definitely walks. a highlight. Prayer walks, definitely all you singles out there. Right. Yeah, yeah, just prayer walk. prayer walk. Prayer walk. We'll find your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then shortly after that, God opened the door for me to go um, into the administration, which I where I was for um, the last four years, and just seeing kind of behind the scenes, wow. not just of the you know the Capitol building, all but four right, years of the previous administration. Correct. Yeah. Yes, previous administration from 2017 to 2021. Um, just an incredible experience and not the place I will say not the place I thought I would be. I was at health and human services again, thought something maybe more international state department, God, you know, and I just really felt like God put me as just a little planted a little mole in there and just took away kind of any desire to, um, be close to people of power because of what they could give me and really just allowed me to see them as, you know, people, people, um, which was such a blessing. Um, and a crazy four years, um, but definitely have just such a heart for this city, and it's wow. it's a it's a difficult place. I know a lot of people know that, um, but I think that God has given us so many glimmers of hope, yes. um, and it's just yes. so refreshing. You know, things like last night when people right. who are just so filled with hope, so filled with mm-hmm. a desire for revival, come to the nation's capital. It really shifts the atmosphere and breathes yeah. life into those of us who are kind of just in the heaviness every right. single day. Totally. So just last night was incredible. And just another yeah. one of those, to your point, bucket right. list moments of, wow, God, you are, wow. you are not done with this country. You're not yeah. done with this city, yeah. this building and what goes on. And, and the, and the fact of like God sending you here, <clears throat> sending people here, everybody has these God stories yes. and, and, and God has his people here. I mean, last yes. night we had <laughs> seven sitting members of the U S Congress yes. joining us in worship right. with yes. their hands lifted high. Yes. Like 
it, it's like uh, you remember it's like God will you save this city if it, there's just 10 righteous yeah. if right. there's just 5 righteous yeah. you know it's like yeah. the number keeps going down but there's a lot of righteous people there, there are and so that's another mm-hmm. another thing that I'm starting to see even mm. people coming out of the woodworks alright Brandon how about you what's your I'm the accidental DC person and I will say this and, and couch this that there's lots of exceptions to this rule yeah. but I often think if you clamor and you want to be in dc that's all you ever right. think about it might not be the people that should actually be in right. dc right because <laughs> there's an allure to this place you know right. you walk in that building every day and it changes you right you walk yeah. in there with your little congressional badge on and you get to walk through the rotunda whenever you mm-hmm. want to that changes you the members as soon as they put that pin on on their little lapel that says i'm a member of congress people start holding the doors open for you right so it kind of changes you and there's an allure to that power there's a lure to that prestige yeah. And I think that you have to be pretty well grounded in this place to yeah. be able to keep that spiritual, you know, bad stuff at bay. And I right. think people forget that this place is, you know, not to over spiritualize it, but to over spiritualize it. Like we don't fight against flesh and blood, the mm-hmm. powers and principalities. And yeah. like, why wouldn't you want to have massive influence in the most powerful government building right. in the history of the world? Like right. this is where decisions are being made that impact everyone right. around the world. Right. Right. In yeah. our country. Yeah. In the guiding beacon of freedom, not only this country was founded in, you know, faith principles and biblical principles, right? And we talked about in the rotunda last night, how that's this big intersection of, you know, the world and what we're going to do with democracy, but also the fundamentals of faith right. that is so you know, it's baked into the, the architecture of the building even, right, right? Right, And I think that you really have to be aware and you have to guard yourself if you want to be totally. successful here and not get yeah. swept up in it. I came here as someone who shouldn't even be here. I mean, I've got <laughs> notes from my junior year of college. I uh, shouldn't tell my boss this if he's listening. I didn't know the difference between the right and the left my junior year of college. I mean, wow. I, we always voted and we always were engaged, you know, as a family. But my parents aren't overly political. But they're overly interested in the direction of the country. Right. Like they want to see good people succeed. Right. And so <clears throat> I came up here and it's kind of an interesting story, but this girl one time told me she did an internship in DC and said, Oh my gosh, you're not nearly smart enough to be an intern in DC. I'm like, What? So I applied, got an internship in DC. And I was joking, I met my congressman that summer and it all went downhill from there because I never left. It's 13 <laughs> years ago at this point. Wow. And, you know, worked on the Hill is this young staffer who wanted to do a good job and did agriculture work and trade work and energy policy. And then I worked on some political work for a while. uh, And it was incredible. And you start getting that sense of, wow, I'm, you know, really somebody. This is a great place to be alive. You know, this is like, look at all the things we get to do. And people come to you every day and they want you to help them. And like, there's something about that that's really like feeds your ego. So long story short, 2014... Some stuff went down in life. That'll be another podcast someday. And it really put me down on my knees. And I firmly believe that the world circumstance will bring you to your knees. It depends mm-hmm. on what you do while you're on your knees, whether you get back up or not. Right, right. right. Fortunately, praise God, I had some people around me, some men around me yeah. that were helped lift me back up. Yeah. And I started asking these questions like, God, what, you know, midlife crisis at, you know, 25? What, do I, what am I doing here? What's the purpose of this place? Why have you put me here for such a time as this? What does that mean in real life, right? right. And I started asking these questions and ultimately went on this like crazy long prayer walk, almost 35 miles where I walked every hallway of every Senate building, all three Senate buildings, through the Capitol, through the House buildings, and then went seven times around the whole thing. It turned out to be almost 35 miles. Wow. And I was just crying. One day. One day. <laughs> started in the morning and ended it, you know, the thing, I got a picture of it if you were at the house here in D.C., but... Um, you know, ended at like 11 p.m. that night and walked 35 miles. And it was this incredible thing that I had to do in my life. It's kind of like the first time you run a marathon, right? Oh, did it. I don't really need to do it again, but I did it. It was this like pilgrimage for me to try and figure out what God wanted out of my life. And I think it was the ability to not get my identity from the job, from the vocation, but it flipped it. And it's like, what's the mission? Right. right. Why are we right. here? Right. And it turned into this right. like idea of service. Right. It turned into this idea of how do we pray into this place? Mm-hmm. How do we bring revival into this mm-hmm. place? And I probably didn't even have a vocabulary for all this at the time. Yeah. Right. But that's what it was. Mm-hmm. And so we started gathering together. This is in like 2015. So this is almost eight years ago. A small group of yeah. staff. We called the staff prayer breakfast. Yeah. We would get start 12 people. The first one in a, a group. It's quite big now. And we've done yeah. it all along. And we gather once a month, have a speaker, whatever. It's a small thing, right? 
but it allows people to come together and talk about Jesus and talk about what we need to do in this place right. to make sure what we're doing every day vocationally is in line right. with the invisible, with the you know pushing back against all the crazy stuff, and it allows us to encourage each other because right. like these jobs, I mean, there's lots of high pressure jobs, and so this is like not any different than that. But like you're dealing with like crazy stuff all the time, right? And it's a dry, parched land in a lot of ways in yeah. the spiritual, in yeah. the faith, because yeah. a lot of people keep that stuff outside the building, right? And I think what this allowed us to do <clears throat> along the way is bring that in the building. You know, a lot of people, myself included, my family included, we've been praying for D.C. a long time, right? And you, you bring those prayers and you airdrop them into D.C. That granite on the front of that building is pretty hard sometimes, right? Yeah. You got to get on the inside. Right. And what we did last night, incredible on the inside. Right, yeah. Yes. What you do in the lives and the hearts of staff members. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're staff, right? We're doing this for our, our you know, our friends, right? And we're right. living in community together in the building. That starts little fires of revival on the right. inside. Right. And I think that's very powerful. So I think it's the full on, you know, prayer assaults from the outside, right. yeah. but building that stuff on the inside yeah. is so valuable. Well, and I mean, I think what I think why last night was significant and, and I want to get to in this season of what what God is saying, what's he doing, some of the prophetic mm -hmm. words, but for, for three years we've hosted the largest worship, yeah. probably one right. of the largest worship and prayer events. In D.C. on the mall, so outside of the Capitol, right. looking at the Capitol, yes, and praying for the Capitol and 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 over the country, mm -hmm. and you know, praying for the overturning <clears throat> of Roe v. Wade, which happened, yep. and all these other things, right? But then to be inside, yeah, it, there's just it. It was it just felt so significant, yep. you know, for and and that that there is a fire that's that's starting from the inside out, yep. and um and and. And also feeling like, I don't know, I've just been, you know, we're in this really cool season. You have, you know, uh, the the Jesus Revolution movie reminding mm -hmm. us of the Jesus People movement. You have the Asbury thing. You have all of this kind of, the, it, it, there's like this rumbling, mm -hmm. yes. you know, and you can feel it. I can even feel it last night, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like this expectation is rising again. Yes. You know, uh, for so many years uh, when Pelosi was at the helm of the Capitol, you couldn't do anything like what we did last night, <laughs> yeah. right? It's a total night and day difference. Yeah. Yes. You know, I can't imagine for you guys that live and work here, just for me visiting. I told you she frosted the windows, right? <laughs> like insane. behind, like if anybody's been to the Capitol before, you can walk behind like the rotunda. You can yeah. look out on the mall. Yeah. She frosted the windows so you couldn't see out the windows and see the beauty of the National Mall. Like, that's how this was locked down. <laughs> the people's house. <laughs> the people's house that all of you guys pay for. Exactly. You exactly. Um, so, so there was a shift politically, but there's also a shift spiritually. Yep. And, you know, what, one of the things we were saying last night was this whole, like, or I, I, I was feeling was this, you know, uh, the, the winter has passed, the spring has come, mm. the season of singing is here. It's 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 a springtime, it's a spring mm, forward. So good. What's what do you guys get a sense of of after years and years and years of being here? How are you not getting tired and weary? And what are you feeling that feeds your expectation and your hunger and your optimism for right. what mm. God's doing in America here? Right. Oh. Go. I would say you know, in full transparency, it is hard. <laughs> there have definitely been seasons where it's right. like, Lord, take whatever hardness has started to, right. that I have not seen creep right. in just from being in this right. place and just break it open. So it is a definitely a difficult thing. But I think for me specifically, it's seeing people coming from outside of DC yeah. to our nation's capital, actually having an interest and a desire right. to right. say, I care about our country. Right. This is not a lost city. Right. Um, there is, you know, sometimes it's not pleasant. Sometimes it's heavy. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah. But like we need to be here yeah. and we have hope. And that hope is so contagious right. for those of us who maybe right. need that little bit of a, right. um, you know, just the the day-to-day -day lifting of the spirits. But I'd say it's it's in small conversations with staff yeah. who say, oh my gosh, <clears throat> I, I never thought that there would be a place where I could come and right. just feel like there's community and other people right. faith or you know it's just because this whole town just fyi for those of you who don't know is run with like 20, 20 year olds, year olds. <laughs> yes 
Yes. Pretty much. 20 year olds and Red Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. right. You know, we were joking yes. last night. We were joking last <laughs> night when we were at, you know, uh, some of the offices of the members of Congress, how the trash can's <laughs> all full of Red Bulls. And it's like, yeah, the House side is powered by Red Bulls. The Senate side is powered by naps. Yeah. Because <laughs> right. they're all old. Right. <laughs> that is so good. That is so we, good. we lovingly say the, the Senate is like a country club and the House is like a truck stop. Right. Yes. Yes. right, right. <laughs> so, yes. The House where the party's at. Exactly. So, so, yes, it's it's fueled by young people. I yeah. think a lot of Americans don't get yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. 20 is a little low, but, you know, 25 to 30 yeah. for yeah. sure, yeah. like 100%. And you will see people that are on the Senate a long time who are taking naps on the Senate side, obviously, uh, that have been here. And you have that institutional knowledge and you have the ability to do this. But the majority of staff members who just make the trains run on time are. <clears throat> I would say in response to that question real quick, this is probably this city of yeah. DC right. and that building right there right. has had more curses hurled at it right. over the years than anywhere else yes. in the world, right? Yes. Definitely. I would encourage folks to throw some blessings that way right. and yeah. still have hope that right. some of this stuff is going to add up to something. Yes. Because like <laughs> at the end of the day, and I go home sometimes, mom and dad, you'll listen to this podcast, so sorry about this, but we get the update on what happened what Tucker said last night. I love Tucker. Right. But like, what happened? And it's like, this place is going to nowhere. <laughs> like, oh! And a lot of people in that building are trying to do the best they can every day. Right. And they're not all getting it right. right. And we can we can talk of another one sometime about all the people that aren't doing it right. Right. But there are a lot of people who are trying to do it right. right. And right. they might not have the answer to every situation. They might right. not have the influence that it needs to like make AOC think a different way about some specific thing. They might not have the ability to get it done in the right. timely manner in which we all right. want it and need right. to get it done. Yeah. But I promise you that there's a ton of people that leave that building every day at eight, nine o'clock, midnight, sometimes middle of the night when there's votes all night that are dog tired, yeah. they're burnt out, they're weary and they're trying to get up tomorrow morning and do the right thing. Right. And they believe that Jesus is not done with this place. They believe that the yeah. Holy Spirit can guide them through yeah. this, but they're doing the best they can. So I think the stuff that we see that gives me hope is number one, there are members who are engaged in this, who are good right. people, are here yeah. for the right reasons. You can check the Instagram and see seven of them from last night that I think are here right. and right. motivated right. by good yeah. things. Yeah. But there's also a ton of staffers that are behind yeah. the scenes. This is odd for us to even have this conversation because like staffers are you know, very private, right? You don't right. talk about this stuff. We're just doing it. I promise you that there's a ton of people just like us that have hearts like us that are trying to really do good in that building right. to make good decisions and encourage right. people. Right. Uh, but it gets a little hopeless sometimes. Yeah. But the faith part, the expectation, the guy's not done with all this yet is, I don't know, for me is what fuels the fire. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I always, I love that verse, you know, in Proverbs, from, from the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. Right. Mm. Um, and and there's, there is something about the power of life and death in the tongue and our ability. Yes. And, you know, I talked about it last night, actually, in the rotunda, like, we cannot play this angry conservative game. Like, it's it doesn't work. Like, it doesn't... And yes, we are going to stand up against the things yes. we need to stand up. We're going to stand up against yeah. the transgender agenda yeah. and the, you know, the, this, this, uh, the de demonic powers of abortion and yeah. all of the yeah. things, right? And, and we're going to take a stand against those things, but, but we, we can't do it out of anger. We can't do mm -hmm. it out of, even out of reaction. And mm -hmm. I felt like last night, like one of the things about worship, and, and this is why we're, we're here and a lot of this is what yeah. we do here, prayer and worship is so, aggressively confrontational mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's and it and it really is it, it's a it's about advancing it's not retreating right. or reacting yeah right and so last night what what shocked me was the fact that here we are going in the rotunda and, and, and everybody would think oh it's so dark so heavy I, I even have some friends like oh we're praying for you and i'm like Dude, you're praying for me to go in the Capitol more than you pray for me to go into a war zone, right. which I mm. go into in Iraq. Mm. But you walk in there, and, and I had that sense of, you know, that verse that said, surely, you know, God was in this place and I mm -hmm. wasn't aware. Mm -hmm. yes. Like, God is in there yes. moving. Yeah. Yes. You know, like, he's not worried about Pelosi trying to lock it down. Like, yeah. he is moving. Yes. He is changing hearts. He's doing what he, what he can do. I believe he's just waiting for more of us to get on board and believe it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I also I think that it. lockdown time was a refining time, right? Yeah. A lot of that chaff inside the building was being burned away. Right. And I think it exposed uh, in a good way and it put a lot of us 
Right. Where, put your money where your mouth is on some of this stuff. Do you believe this or not? Do you right. have hope or not? Right. Are you going to keep doing this or are you going to give up? Right. And I think that was, you know, it was horrible to live through, but it was, we are better on the other side of it. Revelation 12, they conquered the enemy through the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. There was a testimony right. written through that time that I think gives us a perspective right. now to lead us into the future. So why do you guys feel like, you know, some people would look at even where we're at right now, this little place, you know, that's a stone's throw from the Capitol or the Supreme yeah. Court and the proximity <clears throat> of it, it's expensive. It's it's crazy to even have a little bit of real estate here yeah. for a ministry or, or for believers. Why is it important and why is it significant, right? Like why would this make a difference? Mm. Getting somewhere like this, hosting people, having little, like we had yeah. some worship this yeah. morning, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Handful of people. Yeah. Yes. Why do you feel it moves the needle and changes mm. things? This house, this physical location that we're, you know, t- having a conversation in right now, we've been around this house obviously for a long time, uh, and what goes on here, in the ability to have a place. Number one, you're you're claiming ground mm-hmm. in a spiritual yes. way, right? Right. In the nation's capital, right. one block from the capital complex. You're like the stakes in the ground. You're here to stay. We're going to make this happen. Right. It's the outpost, if you will. Mm-hmm. But it's also like the the place uh, where you gather the troops to advance. It's a lot. It's where you pick up the stones. We're going to get geared up. We're going to go. And I think having that place here for um, us all these years, being around, mm-hmm. you know, the ministry side of this. Yeah. Having the the ability to to bring people over and provide hospitality when they have mm-hmm. nowhere else to go and have conversations when no one else will have them. Right. Yeah. Having the ability to provide a respite, but also to invite the worship in, to right. invite the yeah. prophetic in, to yeah. invite yeah. the supernatural totally. in and yeah. say like, you know, how do we, and again, it doesn't take that many people right. to like make yeah. big change, right? Yeah. How do we put some best practices into place and use right. this as a staging ground right. to suit people up? Right. It does all the things from, you know, injured, you know, folks spiritually come in here and get some healing. But also it's a strategic place to say like, this is what we're doing here in the sense of we're going to go and we're going to live on mission, on mission every day in that place. And it's very cool to see it here because it's in proximity to the capital, but it also speaks to a very small uh, 20 something year old subset of us staffers. I'm a little older now, mid thirties. I'm the old guy in the room. Late (laughs) thirties. 38. Uh, but it's a it's a way to have a a sacred space right. that doesn't exist anywhere else. Right. But I right. would also say that you know there are some very big and impressive places in DC, right? Big yeah. buildings, yeah. big right. million dollar homes, all this right. stuff. But I feel like there's something about this specific place about Camp Law that it's in the humility, like a David of. Right. You are so close to the Lord. You're so close to the capital. So there's a proximity there. And I feel right. like it's the sense of the Lord being like, every time you walk, do not despise what I can do with something small, right? right? Like, but yeah. it's the closeness to me. It's the proximity right. to me that gives and brings that power. Awesome. Um, and so I just feel yeah. like in a place like D.C. where people try to put on airs on the outside mm-hmm. and God saying, I'm looking for what's in the heart. I'm looking for the small. I'm looking yeah. for the yes. I'm looking for these little things. Are you going to see that and join in that? And I feel that God has really used you and your ministry and this amazing place to be able to say, you know, we are in it for what God is doing. Um, We are in it for even the little beginnings um, because we don't see it right now, Lord, but we trust and believe that that's coming. So, you know, in specific to, to this house, this house is part of four other houses. It's a row house for those of you can visualize this it's just four houses connected together they're very narrow this house is like 12 feet wide right these houses were built in 1880 by the italian stonemasons who built union station okay this was the workers quarters i think there's something hugely prophetic about people who lived here that built something Mm -hmm. so cool so strong so beautiful so enduring a hub for all these people around the world to come to yeah that now some workers use this as home base Right. right To then launch into a mi- another mission project, right? right it's right. like God just like took this physical location and said, we're going to have workers for this cause here now. Right. And now we're going to have workers yeah. for this cause here now. Yeah. And it's just like a cool thing to think like, this is a humble little spot, right? Right. But it's very strategic. Yeah. Yes. It is so strategic. And even over the last week, you guys have been leading daily prayer walks, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. As we've been yes. doing this, like we've been blasting this, this seven day initiative of prayer, which... Mm-hmm. 
we always need that in this country. But specifically now, as we're, you know, ended with the worship last night in the rotunda, but also just this season of like awakening, you know? Yes. So you yes. guys were leading that, having, you know, up to 50, 60 people one time, yeah. three people or just yourself another time. How, one of the things I think is so profound is that we're so moved, like we are so moved as Americans by numbers, mm. by people, by bodies, by, you right. know, churches are m- motivated by budgets. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a big deal to us. You yeah. know, like Absolutely. you hear pastors talking, that's the first question, how big is your church? How many churches you got? You know, yeah. but God always loves to reduce. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, we see this biblical pattern yeah. yes. again and again and yes. again. Ooh. He does more with less and he yes. wants less. All, almost always, yes. you know. Uh, you see mm. it with Gideon. You see it with, I mean, over and over and over mm. again, taking all of these to, no, nah, let me, let me, I can do more yes. with less. So how does that change your guys' perspective being mm. here in D.C.? Um, I think Americans need to hear that because mm. a lot of times they don't, they don't, they, they, you know, it takes a lot to, to move people. And they yes. think that, well, if you, if you don't have thousands, if you don't have 10,000, right. I mean, at our church, we have 3,000. Why can't y'all do something in D.C.? You know, <laughs> yeah, right. we're down here yes. in Texas and we're, you know, it's yeah, like, right. no, no, no. It's significant. Why? Yeah. They have why parking lots in Texas. That's why you can have so many people. <laughs> 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 you know. Oh, man. I think that's such a good point. And it's yeah. a, it's such a humbling reminder every day for God to just keep saying, the mustard seed. Like, right. do you trust yeah. that the mustard seed can become right. the largest tree? Um, and I think it is for our own protection. It is like, why right. are you here? Are you right. here because you really mm. truly believe that God right. has called you to pray? And, right. you know, it's so encouraging to have seen so many people from, you know, even if, like you said, it was maybe five people some days, God brought them all the way from Boston or from yeah. Texas, all the way. And you're right. like, whoa, right. God, this is amazing yeah. that you're yeah. doing this. Totally. And yet at the yeah. same time, you have that human response of yeah god but it's only five people and he said these are the people that i need and these are people that answered the call these are the people that said yes do you have something i do i think it's that's that's awesome this is a little interesting i think maybe whatever the humility in the process yeah and knowing that us five are playing a role in a greater thing we all want the harvest we're part of the harvest is awesome but if we never get to see the full fruits of what we're doing today, right. we have to be okay with that. Right. If God says, this is your role, and right. you're going to live kind of in obscurity, right. and you're going to be the guys totally. that just pray in the closet all day, and it's five people, and that's what yeah. I want you to do right now, yeah. you got to do it with your full faith, right. with your full heart, and right. your full right. ability, right? With no expectation that, okay, now everybody's going to show up, and the trumpets are going to sound, and right. it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Yay, look what they did. No, it's not that. the deal. <laughs> that would be awesome, and hopefully we get to do that yes. and be part of the actual right. harvest team. Right. And I think we are in lots of ways, but you also have to have the diligent workforce right. that's willing to lock themselves in a little tiny house on the hill yeah. and pray and ask for revival yeah. and do the hard things like yeah. get up at 4.30 in the morning and go get breakfast for a bunch right. of staffers and haul coffee in and try yeah. and have life yeah. conversations totally. when the world's crashing down. Like, that's totally. the nitty gritty. Right. And if you're not okay with that, yeah. and you can do it with just unbelievable intention and wholeheartedness, right. Right. I I don't think that it fits in the greater narrative. Right. Well, it is one of those like stopping for the one type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it is one of those, you know, you may look at it last night and, and be like, there were seven members of Congress there. Man, I wish there would have been a hundred or whatever. But those seven members of Congress represent hundreds of thousands yes. of people. Like they yes. were the votes of. Yeah. I mean, you you take that number, you take yeah. those representatives, and 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 connect them to their districts mm-hmm. where they have authority. Yeah. They've been voted in. They've been raised up, and and they're representing mm. massive amounts of people. Yes. And that's the one thing I do love about about you know. Jehovah sneaky and, and what God's <laughs> doing here is, yes. is, 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 is his presence is moving into halls of power mm. of people that have significant influence to yes. change things for the whole world. Like you said, yeah. yes, you know, and it may seem humble and it may seem small, but these little prayers, yeah. you know, yeah. powerful yeah. and effective. Yeah. Yep. You totally. know? And I think that Absolutely. that's, that's the one thing I would tell people. It's like when you go into the Muslim world, Parts of the most parts of the Muslim world, you know, where you're like, I'm gonna do a big crusade, and I'm not. No, you're not. Right. But if one person gives their life to Jesus mm. in one conversation, mm-hmm. 
they can change a whole family. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They can change it. You know, it's it's yeah. that kind of adjustment mm-hmm. where yeah. in America yes. we're so and I think that that just in my experience in DC I've been coming here for for a minute. That is the thing that people need to adjust yes. to. Yeah. They right. need yes. to adjust their perspectives, you know, mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. to understand that what God's doing here it's powerful and it, and, and, and it's happening, yes. but it's happening at a granular level that's yes. going to impact millions of people. 100%. That's so good. You know, I remember when yes. we were when we were led into the Oval Office and mm-hmm. I just I just remember thinking and we were praying and laying hands literally everywhere. It was mm. awesome. And I just remember thinking, this room, I can't mm. even imagine the impact of what's happened yes. in this room. Yep. And now we're getting to invite the presence of God in here Amazing. to move yep. and to change hearts. And so those opportunities, mm. I believe, like what happened last night, what's conti- going to continue to happen. People like you guys are here to steward it. Like my heart, even in this podcast, is I want people to catch that. Yeah. I want yes. people to not just reject a place like DC. And I'm even praying, and I'm going to have you guys actually pray here in a minute because I, I want God to grab the hearts of people yeah, to good. come here. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, yeah. like I, I think I think we need to get this party started even more. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. more more <clears throat> staffers. Yes. And I'm, I've met them. You know, like yeah. I met a, a somebody the other day walking on the street, and they were an aide or staffer. And I'm like, "What are you doing here?" And they were like, "God called me here." I met a guy, uh, a congressman from Minnesota, that came to an altar call at Let Us Worship mm. and said, "God, I'll go wherever you want me to go." Wow. And he said, "I want you to run for Congress." No way. I didn't win. He won. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like, it's, it's amazing, wild. you know? So, wow. I, I don't know. I just, I feel mm. like, like, part of our, our mission and goal, and in, in even, in, even in this place, I feel like it's to turn the hearts of mm. believers in America back to the city again. 100%. Back to that. believe again. 100%. 100%. I love that. 100%. So, I think y'all should pray. Absolutely. And get them all to move here. Let's do it. Let's do it. do it. And you know, you just think really quickly, you think about, we've talked about kind of the age of these staffers. Right. So many God stories, like you said, of God right. called me here, God called me here. And I think just as a something to be praying for as people who care about our country is that God would sustain and keep community around those people right. to right. be able to stay the course. Because I think what a what a time to feel the call of God to be at a young age where maybe identity and all the stuff you've never had to fully right, wrestle with it right. and then you're put in touch with in this place exactly yeah. and so I think uh, that's certainly our heart for Camp Law. that's certainly our heart for right. you know just prayer right. breakfast of gathering staff to say like fortify unify right. keep the course totally. stay the course right. um, and I think that that because a lot a lot that. of these guys come with really good intentions Absolutely. I mean I was looking at the eyes of those some of those congressmen last night and I'm like, you just been beat up all day. Mm-hmm. You and 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 probably the last thing you want to do is come to some prayer thing and you're walking <laughs> in the road tender to worship God. Like that is such a win. Like it is. you know, it is. and 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 you're missing your family. I was thinking of my mm-hmm. you know, my friend there that's a congressman on the West Coast, missing his family, missing yeah. his kids, yes. miss whatever to be here in DC yep. and this could be just a moment, man, where God Yeah. Reminds yes. me. Yeah. That's good. You so know good. why he's here. Um, so good. We used to call, like, in the height of the, the Trump days when everything was just so crazy, right? Mm-hmm. We used to call the White House switchboard and the receptionist would answer the phone. And she'd be like, hi, this is the White House. How can I direct your call? And we'd say, like, hey, I just, I just want to say thanks. I know you're getting a lot of heat today. I just want to say thanks for answering the calls. Thanks mm-hmm. for being present. Thanks for listening to people express themselves. I'd encourage people to do more stuff like that. Call your congressional office. Call your senator's yeah. office. This staff is a little twenty year old. This staff is yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I know. I know. <laughs> They're answering these calls yes. and getting you know chewed out all day long and getting hurled so much yeah. hate. And I'm not saying like <clears throat> that you, there's not a civic duty to call your congressional office and make right. the direction of our country and your opinion about that known. That's a hundred percent in bounds of what we need to do. But also like these are real people and real staffers on the other end of the phone. And often those staff assistants will rise up through the ranks and become members someday. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, if you can start doing some ministry work on the side and helping yeah. these people along the way, yeah. I really think it adds up to a soft totally. heart moving forward. Absolutely. Because the most dangerous thing in the world, and I'll end with this and then we can pray is hard hearts in that building. Yes. And if those hearts just continue to go down the path of hardness, we'll never bring it back. 
Yeah. But if we can soften hearts and we can speak life over mm-hmm. people, yeah. it'll be good. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. And that's in everyone's power to do. Yeah. Amen. We, we do need we do need hearts to soften yeah. and stay soft. Yeah. Yes. So both our own and hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Yeah. And you know, one of the prayer groups just two days ago during the seven days of prayer. One of the women, we were standing in front of the Capitol after we had marched over there from, mm-hmm. from the um, outpost here at Allah. And, you know, obviously, Allah Valley where David picked up the three stones, right, mm-hmm. to kill the, the Goliath of his day. And, you know, looking at what are the Goliaths that we have both in our own lives, but also our nation, right. the Goliaths wow. are we facing. And I just, we just took a moment to ask the Lord, like, what is that stone? And maybe it's a different stone for different people. But I was so surprised because all he told me was love. Love is that stone. When you're looking at this building, the Goliaths that typically make you angry or frustrated, like you're saying, that kind of angry conservatism, Mm -hmm. he's like, it's the love. It's the small conversation that just softens the heart, that takes someone, you know, catches Mm -hmm. someone by surprise. And I just feel like we uh, we don't always understand or, you know, use the the power of that. And so just a little something. 100%. And that does not mean... To settle on the no. boldness and the truth right. at all, yeah. Yeah. but that means to seek boldness and truth right. in love. Right. Don't use the enemy's hate tactics of division right. and gr- use the you know unsavory nature in which we communicate about this stuff. Sometimes right. try and figure out a way and pray into it and do it as Christina said in love. Like Jesus is like saying, "Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing." Yeah. Right. Like, how can we be like, "Forgive them"? We don't, they don't know what they're doing. They're idiots, but we're going to love them and we're going to try and get to their right. heart and right. speak over them in a yeah. way in which that heart turns back to the kingdom. Yeah, come on. Well, everybody out there, you receive this prayer. Any of you hated D.C., hurled <laughs> insults at D.C., uh, curse this city, uh, prepare to repent. No, just... <laughs> Join the club and then uh, yeah, join us in yeah, love. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, but just, just receive this prayer. I think, I think God's going to release something yeah love that i'll start and close yeah sure heavenly father lord we just um we thank you that you are king that you are you are god there is no surprise that happens um on this earth that you are not fully aware of and fully uh in front of and so father we just we lift up this conversation to you today we lift up Mm. um anything that has been said that needs to pierce hearts that is specifically from you nothing of our own, but um, of your spirit, God, that you would just speak to everyone listening, Lord, that you would give them an assignment, that you would show them what stone it is that you need them to hold in their life, Lord. What is it that you've called them to do? Um, The Goliath in their own life, it's a relationship that's difficult. It's it's something here that's on a much larger scale in our nation's capital and in our country, Lord, things that they're fighting for. Um, But Father, we just ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you are doing, where you are moving. Where are we missing you, God? Where are we looking for the numbers when you're in the the small handful of people? Um, Help us to be sensitive to your spirit and to know where the move of God is and give us a hunger to desire above yeah. all else to join in that movement no matter what it looks like um, and Lord would just we just ask for for humble hearts repentant hearts for any ways that we have hardness um, in our own hearts Lord uh, just help to soften those by the power of your Holy Spirit um, and and compel us to move into love in the way that that you do in truth and in boldness uh, but with a gentleness of spirit that only can be given through your Holy Spirit mm. Holy Spirit, I just ask you to guide and direct, as Christina said, our hearts and our ears and our minds as we engage in this. And I ask you to bless staff members, the members of Congress, yeah. the yeah. support staff that are in this mm-hmm. building, that they would just have a new revelation of who they are in you today, mm-hmm. that fresh wind would blow through that building and just revive you know, the weary. I also ask just for us as people who care deeply about our country, mm-hmm. And we have an obligation to care deeply about our country that if we would focus and you would help us focus on the revival Mm -hmm. and the praying into this place more than all the circumstances, because revival changes circumstances, Mm -hmm. right? But we can't manipulate the circumstances really and get to the revival. So we're going to pray into this idea that you are not done with this place. Yeah. That 
hearts are turning towards you already Amen. and that will continue to turn towards you, that we are satisfied with the role that we play in this, in our democracy or in mm -hmm. this city or in our jobs on the hill, that we're going to labor for you and it's going to be worth it and that the harvest will come. And I just ask you to just really like see deeply in all of our hearts today and everyone who's listening to this, that you have a role for us to play in this, that you have a way for us to engage yeah. in it. And it can be done through love. It can be done through the ability to look past the fence and that with that, the truth, the boldness, the courage can grow. Uh, so water this, till this land, allow your spirit to come. I just ask for a blessing on this house, yeah. that it would continue to be used for your kingdom, that the yeah. ministry could continue to flow out of here, that people could continue to pick up stones here. And I just pray for our country that we're in very turbulent times right now, and there's a lot of stuff that is not going in a great direction. But you're bigger than that. Amen. This can turn around in a second. And I ask that the seeds that were planted in that building last night with mm -hmm. the worship and the hands raised towards heaven would be yet again a starting point for your kingdom to come. We give all this to you. We pray for all the things that are unseen. And we ask you to do your will here and help us to be a part of it uh, and lead with love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Powerful. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Share this. Post it. Listen to it. Get blessed by it. We'll see you next time.